in 2012, a dive team performed a thorough search of an ancient shipwreck off the coast of a small Greek island called Antikythera. The shipwreck had been discovered over a hundred years earlier, but these divers were on the lookout for anything that had been left behind. The team found hundreds of previously undiscovered treasures, including pottery, statues, and a sarcophagus lid. But perhaps their most intriguing discovery was found lying on the sea floor near the wreck, a rusted bronze disc about three inches across. The divers brought the disc back with them, cleaned it, and performed a close examination with x-rays. They found that the surface of the disc contained the traces of what was an engraving, a drawing of a bull, the zodiac sign for Taurus. Researchers now believe that this disc will prove to be a crucial clue in unlocking the true purpose of the Antikythera mechanism, a mysterious artifact discovered by the original dive crew. Long considered to be one of the most sophisticated and unexplained ancient items in the world, the Antikythera mechanism may now be closer than ever to giving up its last remaining secrets. In the spring of 1900, just after the turn of the century, an expedition of Greek sponge divers led by Captain Dimitrios Kontos was on its way home from a season spent fishing in North Africa. They were in the Aegean Sea, close to home, when developing storms forced them to take shelter. Kontos decided to stop on a small island called Antikythera, located to the northwest of Crete, and wait for the storm to pass. Once it did, it decided to stay in the area a bit longer and look for sponges, and in doing so, stumbled onto something much more significant the wreck of an ancient Greek cargo ship, lost in the same shallow waters some 2,200 years earlier. The crew learned of the wreck when one of the divers returned to the surface, visibly rattled, and said that he had seen human bodies on the sea floor. The others surfaced shortly, with similar tales of bronze statues and mummified corpses lingering amidst the debris of an ancient ship. Contos worried that nitrogen had mixed into their breathing apparatuses and caused them to hallucinate, so he decided to investigate the wreck himself. The divers, it turned out, had not imagined the shipwreck at all. Once it had been confirmed, Kantos and his crew decided to return to the mainland and report their findings to scientists who could make sense of them. A new dive team of underwater archaeologists was assembled. They spent a year exploring and documenting the Antikythera wreck in one of the first ever underwater excavations of its kind. They found ancient statues, pottery, jewelry, coins, and other artifacts, carefully hauling them all to the surface. The material salvaged were brought to the National Museum of Archaeology in Athens to be further evaluated. The works of art drew most of the initial interest and focus, but there was another relic hiding in plain sight that would eventually consume their attention. Something large and covered in green rust, something the dive team first mistook to be a rock covered in algae. But it was not a boulder at all. It was something man-made. The object seemed to be bound together, but fell apart upon transfer to the museum into several fragments. These were warped pieces of bronze, seemingly part of a larger hole and each about a foot in length. They also contained traces of decayed wood mixed into their makeup, presumably from the wooden crate the object was being carried in. These mysterious fragments sat mostly unnoticed in the museum archives for over a year before anyone began to unlock their secrets. That together, they formed a fantastic and almost unbelievable machine from a distant past. On May 17, 1902, one of the archaeologists assessing the recovered treasures at the Antikythera wreck, Valerio Stice, decided to give the mass of bronze and wood a second look. Upon close inspection, he discovered that one of the pieces of the bronze casing had something else embedded in its side a large toothed wheel that appeared to be a gear. He excitedly began poring over the other fragments. Though the device was recovered as a single mangled lump of metal and wood, there proved to be 82 separate fragments all told, pieces of a larger puzzle. Four of the bigger fragments turned out to contain similar looking gears, the largest of which was 5.5 inches in diameter, with 223 small teeth carved into its circumference. Stice, shocked by the discovery, went to work trying to decipher the device's true purpose. But the corrosion of the metal made it difficult to inspect without compromising its integrity with the tools available to him at the time. Unable to get a complete look at the device's interior, Stice hypothesized that the gear wheel indicated that perhaps the contraption was an astronomical clock 
assembled by the ancient Greeks, but his colleagues disagreed. While ancient Greeks were known to have built gears, they seemingly only used them for simple tasks, nothing as intricate as this machine appeared to be. It was too technologically advanced for the time period, they argued, and most had been from a later era. However, they were hard-pressed to explain how the device coincidentally wound up mixed into the wreck with relics from an earlier era. The interest in the object waned over the following decades, as the archaeologists remained occupied with other artifacts less shrouded in mystery and doubt. Over the following decades, the fragments continued to be cleaned and catalogued. But it wasn't until 1971 that the next momentous discovery was made when the use of X-ray technology finally allowed experts to get a closer look at the intricacies concealed by time and decay. It was a British scientist by the name of Derek J. DeSala Price who brought a renewed interest to the curious object. In 1951, Price was living in the United States and teaching at Yale University, where he held the title of Avalon Professor of the History of Science. That year, he traveled to Athens and became acquainted with the Antikythera collection. Price spent the next eight years analyzing the machine's various parts, and in June 1959, published a thorough analysis in the magazine Scientific American. In his article, he called the object the most complex scientific object that has been preserved from antiquity. He imagined the device like a box with dials on its exterior and, quote, a complex assembly of gear wheels inside which controlled its operation. As to its purpose, Price agreed that the object was, as had been correctly theorized in the past, an astronomical calculator of some kind, used to do math and keep track of time. Thanks to decades of meticulous cleaning by the museum technicians, the original etchings on the device's front-facing dials could now be read and gave tremendous insight into their purpose. Price suggested that the mechanism had been operated using a now-missing crank mounted onto the device's side. The two large dials on its front seemed to overlap to function as the display for data output. The outer dial, the larger of the two, contained markings corresponding to the Egyptian calendar, 365 days represented by 12 sections of 30 days each, plus five additional intercalary days. In close photography of the dials, 12 letters from the Greek can just be made out around the edges, representing the 12 months. The second inner dial represented the zodiac calendar, indicated by small etchings representing the 12 zodiac signs. Price, it seemed, had solved the riddle of the device's front dials, but what of the more complex series of dials on its back? This system involved more gears in two separate rows. Based on the etchings he could make out, Price wrote that the lower dials seemed to track the movements of the sun and moon. The upper dials, he wrote, were, quote, much more crowded and might well present information on the risings and settings, stations and retrogrades of the planets known to the Greeks. What this meant, in essence, is that the device could be used to track the moon, the sun, the planets, and the constellations across the sky and predict eclipses, equinoxes, and other astronomical events, like the ancient festivals of the Olympics. In total, Price's findings in reassembling the fragments and decoding their etchings were revelatory. What he found was not just a simple calculator, as had been suggested, but a millennium-old analog computer with machinery more complex than a modern wristwatch. The other question that Price answered in his decades of work analyzing the mechanism was that of where and when it had come from. He deduced from the position of the gears and the inscriptions upon them that the device was likely created circa 87 BC and lost in the shipwreck only a few years after that. The French explorer Jacques Cousteau visited the Antikythera wreck in 1976 and found coins that his lab dated to between 76 and 67 BC, which seemed to support Price's assertion. It's still not known why the machine was being carried aboard the doomed cargo ship, but Price suggested that it may have been in the process of being transported across the Aegean from Rhodes to Rome. Many of the vases recovered from the wreck were done in the Rhodesian style, which makes the busy port city of Rhodes a likely place of origin for the ship itself. In 2006, Xenophon Musas, an astrophysicist at Athens University, added to this hypothesis with his own, that the device was headed to Rome to be used in a triumphal parade for the Emperor Julius Caesar in the first century BCE. Another theory was that the ship was carrying various items of intrigue back with it from the Roman sack of Athens in 87 to 86 BCE. The most prominent modern theory, however, is that the ship's plotted course was from Rome to Turkey. 
We will likely never know exactly where it came from or where it was bound for, nor the full range of its abilities, having spent two millennia under the sea. The bronze disc discovered by the recent dive team that examined the Antikythera site in 2012 could prove to be a huge puzzle piece for researchers still working to put together a full picture of the mechanism's gear systems. The gear's etching of a torus suggests it's tied to the device's zodiac mechanism, but how it fits is still not exactly clear. New forms of microphotography have revealed thousands of new text characters previously invisible to the eye across the many gear fragments, and historians are inching closer to unlocking its remaining mysteries. But even without a full understanding of it, the Antikythera mechanism has already proven itself authentically groundbreaking. Nothing of its kind, from anywhere in the world, would surpass it for 1,500 years. <laughs>